Hey, so if you're really looking for an actual reliable application of OpenAI, you're not alone, me too. So today I wanna to show you one thing that I think might work reliably, and, and that is ticket classification or any kind of text-based email conversation or you know, or even document, I guess, classification. Uh, but here, really what matters to me is, you know, I wanna take in a, a te uh, email chain and ex extract all the topics that were discussed and be able to actually uh, do some analytics on that later on. Uh, you know, so what we want is we want to graph some, to something like this where, you know, we can see how many, what kind of topics were discussed and how much. So we know which problems to actually tackle first. And the, the usual ways to do it is to have people tag it. But, you know, but as soon as there are more topics in a conversation, um, you know, it is pretty taxing on people to actually keep asking them to add these, uh, these tags. Um, and it's also, you don't know how reliable that is uh, either. You know, you that there are there were some um, you know, more advanced ways with AI, which just uh, to actually start tagging conversations. But this was also pretty advanced. You need a separate app for this. But now, OpenAI sort of made, made the tools pretty versatile that we can actually adapt it to do this for us too. So let's go and see if you can actually apply the principles to your applications. So. I actually want to know what kind of applications you use so that I can see if what I'm telling you actually makes any sense uh, and maybe I can uh, go a bit deeper to see which systems are best to uh, to take this take this with them. Um, yeah, so you know we're we're back to our uh, collab of course and you know you'll need to fully uh, fully understand this. This is essentially just for me to query the GPT-4. Um, this is where I input the instructions to the agent and this is where I put in the email and that's it. And then I'll just be able to query easily just typing this into the prompts. So what really matters, the most important thing here is the instructions. So this is, this is the prompt that we have to engineer to get, this, to get it to do what we want. In this case, I actually made, um, yeah, I made a list of, categories that are available essentially that I want the um, I want the model to extract out of these conversations and I said hey please analyze the email conversations and uh, we're a manufacturing company so it knows what slang is to use and uh, you know and so on so it's good to give a little bit of context and and then I said I need a JSON object containing all the topics and number of times discussed uh, each so I just tell it exactly what I want here are the possible categories and I give an example of how it would look. This helps a lot. So now we have good instructions and let's test it out with an email. So let's say in this email, we discuss three things and I know I run the GPT-4 as I showed you there as a setup. So it just basically feeds this email and those instructions to it. And that's what it spits out. It says, okay, there was once order status and delivery updates um that's that's what it is this is it and this was not discussed not discussed not discussed uh then quality control so didn't match tolerances perfect and then other one so here tell me what you can produce i'm guessing this falls into this i would want this to fall into pricing and quotes i guess uh, but this category might be unclear to AI, so we might need to adjust something, either the category, explain the categories a little bit more or something. Uh, but we see generally that it works. Now it gives me a JSON. If I put in a real file, real email, again, this is generated by AI, by ChatGPT too, so that it, it's not a real email, uh, but it really seems like one. And now it actually extracts a lot more categories, as you can see uh, everywhere here. So it's really about all about those instructions. That's something we need, you need to work on and understand how to set up. And then from there on is really just, it matters on where you're doing this. Cause now, you know, we have the whole JSON and now it just depends on where do you want to put it. In my scenario, I do a lot of Zapier. So what I'll put it, uh, what I'll do is I'll put uh, actually this JSON, I send it directly to one of my Zaps. I sent those Zaps, I, I set up the Zapier here. It catches the webhook and stores it in the spreadsheet. 
so, so that when I run this, it sends the category successfully to a spreadsheet, and that spreadsheet is here. Now, you see, we have, uh, you know, for every conversation, we have a number of times uh, each topic came up, and now we can just do a su like a summary, uh, do a, a graph, a nice graph, and see uh, what's what's actually going on. What what are the conversation about? Where are we spending a lot of our time on? And and I just want to emphasize two things. One, as you see, these will contain customer information, and it will be sending stuff to OpenAI, which is considered a third party. Uh, so be yeah, be wary if you can do this or not. That's it's up to you and your team, your legal team, your and two is that these categories are actually the most important thing. So of course the prompt is important, but the categories have to make sense because you need to be able to take action. Uh, you know, you need to take action on these. If the if it's too broad, you cannot take any action. If it's too narrow, you you really you will not see them happening you know, often enough for you to also take any action. So it has to be just right. Um, and just to finish off with like an end-to-end -end example, again, if you're using Zapier, um, you can see how this could be done. Is a new email arrives in my Gmail. I actually made a something simple, something different here, where I changed that prompt a little bit, and I said, you know, on my personal email, I don't really, I you know, the categories don't apply. So in this case, the categories I did is, oh, are there any tickets in those emails? Is it promotion? Is it, is it written by a human or is it just other automated email? So now um, it actually can determine from the email that arrived in my inbox and add a label uh, on that email. So now I have a labeled email uh, in my inbox. And since we're talking about uh, data analysis, obviously this would be replaced by whatever software you use, Zendesk or whatever it is. Um, and uh, yeah, you can, you can apply there it there or you can actually store it in a database uh, of your own choosing and yeah but this is also possible without zapier so just tell me know what your software stack is what your uh, third-party software stack is and, and i'll see if it can help hope this was useful see you next time